In Game 3 of the ALCS, we suffered our most heartbreaking loss of the entire franchise. We carried a one-run lead into the bottom of the 8th inning when Randy Arozarena tied the game on a solo home run. And after taking a slim lead in the 12th inning, a heartbreaking grand slam lifted the Rays to a Game 3 win, giving them the edge in this series 2-1. We now look ahead to Game 4 today, and Logan Gilbert will be taking on a former member of our team in the franchise, Mitch Keller. Keller didn't have much success with us back in the 2026 season, and was traded a year after. He has played much better since joining the Rays, and this year put together one of his best seasons yet. The Keller experiment not working out for us partially led to then the signing of Logan Gilbert, who has had a very shaky season with us this year. I felt like there was more good than bad, but overall he wasn't as good as I was hoping he'd be this season, and his only postseason appearance was a short-lived three-inning outing, and that simply is not going to cut it today. After burning up our bullpen last game, giving multiple innings to Joan Duran, we really need a good start out of Logan Gilbert in this very critical game four. My feeling going into this matchup is Gilbert, of course, starts, and I'd also be interested in seeing Cole Phillips almost be a second starter for this game to give us some innings afterwards and allow the bullpen to recover. I think a lot of these guys are certainly available, but now nobody is truly fresh coming out of the bullpen. Jonathan Hernandez is probably one of our first guys out. Gregorio Uribe against some lefties will play, but I uh, I think we really need this game to go our way in a couple different directions. Welcome into game four of the ALCS, everybody. We're playing the most intense games the franchise has seen. Last episode was honestly a classic, but it had the most heartbreaking ending imaginable for us. You know, when you're rebuilding, you really can't experience heartbreak. This is new. We've scored three, two, and four runs. I want to see our offense come alive better in game four, and that's part of why Usneel Cruz is going to get the start. Because if there was ever a game where we need to get the offense rolling, support our starting pitcher, this is the one. So here is our old pal Mitch Keller getting the start in game four. And he will face Aaron Don, who has been ice cold in the series. Two for the postseason here as a hitter, hitting 077. But I am not taking him out of the leadoff spot right now. I think that he still made a lot of good contact. We're waiting for one to fall in. Now would be a good time. 2 0. That came off the bat a little weakly, and it's a ground out to short. Luis Arise hitting 283 on the season. I'd like to see our postseason numbers there, ideally. Eight homers for us, though, in the... We've played six postseason games. And now Luis Arise. Well, you could argue should be hitting leadoff. He's been more successful than Don as of late. Hits him in the shoulder. Another hit by pitch. Guerrero gave us a home run in the last game. Now hitting 217 in the postseason. Good strike from Keller. You know, we've hit eight home runs, but how many of those have been solo? Both of Laddie's have been. Vargas has three solo jacks, and that's five of the eight. Don has a, a grand slam. But we need to start capitalizing more with runners on base. Last game was extremely winnable, but we we must have left 15 guys on base in that game. It was extra innings, but we had three bases loaded situations. Struck him out. Three bases loaded situations, and we never got you know a big hit or a sacrifice fly. Here's Fran Reyes with two gone in the inning. Reyes has had a pretty good postseason. He's still been delivering big hits for us, and he turns on a fastball, drilled to deep left. Watch this fly. It's out of here. And Reyes puts the A's on the board 2-0. 
That was a big time swing for us. We needed that one. Surprisingly, it's only his first homer of the postseason, and as I've said, he still had a really good postseason to this point, hitting 333. Had a, a couple hits to opposite field last episode, but that's why we're excited about him, the long ball. That might find its way through, and Soderstrom delivers again on an 0-2 pitch. I hope you guys are enjoying the one-game episodes. I know it slows the pacing down, but I think I'll be able to get more episodes up here in this stretch and keep the postseason moving along. I'm having a really good time with these games. And now a drive into center field that touches down, and we have two more base runners with a busy top of the first. Miguel Vargas is hitting 292. Hitting seventh, that misses inside. Missing away, a 3-1 count, Carlson's on deck. Keller had a strong start, but now, now it's turning into a nightmare quickly as we go 3-2. Payoff pitch, line drive, right center, and we will add another run. Not risking it out at third base. Probably could have gotten there. But we're going to take a 3-0 start. And why should the party end there? When Dylan Carlson's been hitting in the 360s. Out in front. Keller trying to wrap this one up. That gets away. And now everybody's advancing. Two runners in scoring position. Mitch Keller hoping to end the inning against the hottest player in our lineup. Is that going to be playable? It might. Drifting towards the bench and can't get to it. 30-plus pitches in the first now for Keller. Ah, oh, man. I looked at that same strike in game three with him. Yeah, I let a lot of the borderline ones go. Don't like how that ended, but a 3 nothing lead handed off to Logan Gilbert. Let's go. Randy Arozarena. Fun player, fan of his, but why do you have to do what he did last episode? Missed inside, and a quick go two. Following a couple misses from Gilbert, he misses again. Full count to a Rosarena, and he checked his swing. Four straight out of the zone. And now Josh Lowe will get in that bat. He did not play in game three. And it's grounded on to Guerrero. We'll go quickly. Get two. Not his sharpest stuff here as he falls behind Jazz 3-0. 12th pitch of the inning. And another check swing. He does go. But he walks his second batter of the inning. And that brings up Gavin Sheets. Much better on the sinker. Got to find a pitch he can actually locate here. The splitter. So... That was the new pitch we gave him. Don's going to have to chase this one deep into the gap, and he can't get it. And the Rays will strike now with a two-out RBI double. The splitter was the new pitch for him this year, and it wasn't good in his first start. And early on, not showing good command of it. All right, that fooled him for some reason. Can you give us a good splitter? No, that's that's not good. Popped up. Cruz will try to track this one down at the... Guys, get out of the way. Whose side are you on? And it's on the ground. Arise makes the play, and the first is done. Not smooth for either pitcher. But Yusneel Cruz will get a chance now to play today. 
Looking for an offensive boost. Cruz on the hanging curve, sent to deep left and tracked down. Don is now 0 for 14 in the ALCS. And he finds his first hit of the series. Swung right through that one. Not often you see that from a rise. We haven't been stealing bases at all in the postseason, but with Aaron on first base, now it's an option. Two and one. Jammed into left. And it falls in. Aaron hustling does get there in time. How does a rise do it? The guy just gets singles, man. You can spend all day just hitting line drives at people, and he gets one of those to fall in at 59 miles per hour off the bat. Two on for Vladimir Guerrero. Let that one go. On the ground, and this could be two, and the Rays pick up a big double play. Four innings of postseason ball from Gilbert. I have not been impressed yet. And now the umpire, I'm not impressed with him. Brandon Lau on the best splitter I think he's thrown today. Wow, way over the top. Is it that nice? One and two. Getting his first strikeout. One thing the Rays have done a good job of is gotten big hits from the guys that you're less worried about. These guys at the bottom of the order. Curtis Mead has had some massive hits. And now gets out in front of a good curveball and Vargas retires him. Harry Ford has had big at-bats. That, uh, what was his name? Brock something in the last game. This looks to be a much better inning for Gilbert, and we got him. Well, Reyes got the party started for us. Now top three. Keller already into the mid-40s pitch count-wise, and over half his energy expended. A drive hit to center now, but that ain't quite it. Here's one hammer to opposite field. Soderstrom. Oh my, that was close. Sweeney, a two out knock. We've done our best work here with two outs anyway. And that is down the line a fair ball, but a Rosarena will keep it just a single. But another two-out hit for Oakland, getting to Dylan Carlson. I know one thing here, I cannot look at strike three. And that is way up and in. Three doubles in the series here for Carlson. And a sinker in there. And strike two, so can we do a better job protecting Keller. Well, now I'm chasing stuff. And it's chopped right back to Mitch Keller, who will wrap the inning up. That's down the line. Twisting. It is foul by a foot. That's a good breaking ball. So, Gilbert only got to go three innings in his last outing. We're bottom three now, and he opens it with a beautiful strikeout. Rolled it over. Sweeney gathering for a routine second out. And Vargas, can he chase this down? It is out of reach. Two close calls hit down the line in this inning. 0-1 to low, and he lets go a 12-6. Close, but falling behind now. Three and one. 
And it's bounced on to Arise. Feeling much more confident in Logan today. Eight hits already for Oakland in this game. A lot of guys left on base. You sneal Cruz second at bat. That is a base hit into right field. This time a leadoff single. 108 off the bat. He is different. And that gets us Aaron Don, who sends one to opposite field. And we have quickly two on here in the fourth. I knew he was due. A couple singles on the board now for Aaron Don, and that gets us a rise. Keller's day might be coming to an end soon. He misses high. And it's turned on by a rise, and it is flied out in right field. Creating chances, though, for our best power hitters. Here's Guerrero. Bounced into a double play last time. And he might do it again. Little inside out. Ugly end of the inning. Bottom of the fourth inning. And Logan Gilbert getting ahead of Gavin Sheets. Already one gone. Pitch 47. Wow. Are you not going to give him that? This umpire's zone has been really bad. The edges are just getting nothing. Lifted for Don in center. And this time he should be able to get it. And he does. That's a good slider. And we can tell his action now in the raise pen. Two strikes on David Richardson. And four good innings of work. They're not making a move quite yet. Keller begins the fifth. 66 pitches in. Haven't shown as much patience here. I'm not going to be patient on that one. The Guerrero one, I just kind of got fooled on it. I thought it would be uh, a good pitch to, to swing at, much like the curveball in the previous at-bat that led to that double play. Letting Keller off the hook a little bit. He has not been good. And now Reyes sent towards the left center gap. Has it tracked down by Chisholm. And that's a blast down the line. It is foul, though. And this one's going to stay fair and get into the corner. Soderstrom on his way to second with a one-out double. That could spell the end here for Keller in this game. Or not. Sounds good. Trey Sweeney's already two for two. Ah, I want one of those breaking balls, but he's seldomly thrown it today. Getting ahead of Sweeney, one and two. And missing low. This time, a hanger, and it's his third hit of the day. Not sending Soderstrom home on that. We got the pitch we wanted there and barely made contact. So the Rays are going to make a move here and bring in a new pitcher. It will be Drew Rasmussen. We have not seen him yet. But it's a righty. In to face Miguel Vargas. He's already got a couple hits and we need this fourth run to come home. Out in front of a slider. Fouled back and now an 0-2 hole. In the dirt and smothered by Curtis Mead. And he got him on a slider. Strike three. Missed a lot of opportunities in this series. Plenty of runners left on base. Inning up to Dylan Carlson now. And it's in the air. To right, shallow, to finish off the top of the fifth. Rasmussen cleans up the mess. Meanwhile, I do want to just start getting someone warm. You never know. And we're going to probably get Ashby warm along with Jonathan Hernandez. And there's still the option of playing Phillips. 
If we had cashed in and it were like a 7-1 to one game here, absolutely. Phillips could maybe be counted on, but we're down in this series. We're only leading by two. So I'm not feeling Phillips at the moment for this role. They've chased a few of these, though. Gilbert getting ahead on Brandon Lau. Two and two, and a good pitch that's lifted. Vargas ranging out. And the pitch counts very good for Logan as well, as Meade swings through a pitch that was hittable. 60th pitch is a hanging splitter. He's confident in it, but he's not throwing it as well as you'd expect him to, given his confidence. I've liked the 12-6 more today. Slider on to Guerrero. He will flip it and get the second out. Front door slider at the knees. And this one's past Guerrero. Carlson can't get it there quick. Firing into second, but the speed of Ford is too much. It's a two-out double. And that'll bring up the nine hitter, Carson Williams. No RBIs, a 125 average in the postseason. Big spot. And he delivers with a drive to left that Cruz can't get to. And it's a one run game. Williams comes through with a clutch hit. Their uh, grand slam yesterday, or. Was it the two out or the double? One of those hits was from somebody who had done nothing until that point. So a one run game now in the fifth inning. Runner goes and Soderstrom delivers too late. On the edge. And the one, two, not competitive. And that missed. Calling for a splitter. Let's see if Soderstrom's right. Wow, he reached out, and we will end the inning. That was lucky. We're through five, hanging on. Aaron Don with a pair of hits in this game. As Rasmussen delivers a strike inside. Swung right through it. I couldn't have missed by much. And it's on the hands. It's jammed to shallow short. And now a drive off the bat of a rise. Deep to right center and chase down on the warning track. Rasmussen puts us down in order. While we are going to make a change here in the bottom of the sixth, it's Aaron Ashby. We will bring in our lefty here to face three straight lefties. Overall, pretty happy with the outing for Logan Gilbert, but no need to chance things now against their middle of the order with the righty. Come on, man. Such an inconsistent zone. Can't have that here in the ALCS. You should be calling meaningless games in Kansas City. Two and two. And it is past the diving Miguel Vargas. Now watch out, this team loves to run. Jazz the batter. That's dangerous. Got him 0-2. This is a really big inning here. The 0-2 is low. How is Jazz taking these pitches? I mean, the misses are barely misses. And he struck him out. Here is Gavin Sheets, and he sends a laser to Cruz that he makes for out number two. 
Nice pitch inside to Richardson. The count is even. And he chased strike three. Some undisciplined swings getting us through these innings as we move ahead to the seventh up by one. Been a while since we scored. 3-1 Oakland. Here is Guerrero. And a drive headed to the gap in right center. Deep to the wall, it stays in the yard. But a leadoff double is in for Vladimir Guerrero. Another chance given to Fran Mill Reyes. Swung through it, actually late. That was a late swing, very late. And now he's going to right center with his own. And this one is tracked down, but Guerrero moves up 90 feet. That means Soderstrom will try to bring home that fourth run with the infield in. Rasmussen's been really attacking the zone early in these counts. You've got to be ready. 1-0. Wow, that was, that was perfect. I guess that was late. And that is going to find its way through. Soderstrom puts us up 4-2 in the 7th. Huge insurance run. Can't leave them all on base. Sweeney now a 3-for-3 three three day as he takes a big hack at the two-seamer. We've been late on some of these swings. Got to speed that up a little bit. Good pitch. Ah, ugly at bat. Rasmussen with three pretty good pitches. Borderline. So let's get Vargas up there. And we have a drive in the air. Deep left field. Carrying over the fence. No, it stayed in. And we'll have second and third now. I was holding L1. I thought we were going to get him rounding third. But Vargas delivers a big hit. Putting two on for Carlson, who's 0 for 3 on the day. Yeah, we're ready for that, but too early. Ground ball. Send it through. And wave home Vargas while you're at it. That is a two-run single. Dylan Carlson does it again. We have a four-run lead. Rasmussen has challenged us in the zone. He won the early battles, but now we've adapted. They got Gregory Soto. I didn't know that. I was not familiar with their bullpen. So, in a four-run game, I am so much more willing now to consider playing Cole Phillips. You sneal Cruz with two gone, facing the lefty Soto. I am contractually obligated to tell you he was in the Rockies franchise, and I haven't said that in a while. Oh, man. All of a sudden, he threw us 101 mile per hour fastball. <laughs> well, we have 16 hits and six runs. We're going to make a change here to start the seventh inning. And we are now going to take Yusniel Cruz out of the game for uh, a defensive substitute. It's going to be Samad Taylor. Cruz, you know. Might not need as bad again, but let's get our defense out there. And I am thinking we could use Cole Phillips after this uh, at bat with Lau. It'd be his playoff debut in a four-run game. And ideally, we could get two innings from him. And Hernandez the ninth is how I'd like to set things up. And Taylor will put this away. Ashby doesn't have a whole lot of energy here. But he gets ahead of Mead. And another strikeout for Aaron Ashby. That brings up Harry Ford, and we're going to make our pitching change. So we're giving Phillips a chance to come in now with already two gone in the inning. 
And his regular season was uh, very shaky. Only made six starts. And now bottom of the seventh. That was down the middle. Foul. That was uh, definitely under the bat. One and two, and grounded onto a rise. To, to the eighth inning we go. Hard to ask for more than 16 hits from a team, but I wouldn't mind. 17, Don hustling down the line. Oh, he's out by a half step. I'd challenge that if I could. 3-0 and oh on Luis Arise. That's sent the other way, and Arise does what he does. 68 off the bat. Guerrero is going to bounce into his third double play. Unfortunate. So Phillips is going to start the inning off. We have Hernandez getting warm if things go awry. And now he won't be subject to the three batter minimum. There's a strike outside. Ahead of Carson Williams. And putting him away. Good change up to a Rosa Arena. This count is two and two. And he got him. Struck him out on a fastball that he reached back to throw at 95. We'll take that. And now inside the low. That's one of our best innings of the postseason delivered by Cole Phillips. And with the four-run lead here minimum going into the ninth, he's going to start the inning. Hernandez is only there if things don't go as planned. Caleb Ferguson is in. We've seen him already. And Reyes skies one towards the gap. And the play is made. We got a full count here to Trey Sweeney. Not chasing anything. Ferguson, payoff pitch. Out in front, and we're going bottom nine. And we're going to ask Cole Phillips to stay in there at least initially. We do have Hernandez getting ready. I'm also going to warm up Uribe. His last inning was dominant. He's picked up four outs on 13 pitches as he nails the outside corner. Getting ahead of Jazz and striking him out on three pitches is Cole Phillips. Come on, man. That's one Sheets can really do some damage on. Same with that one. Too much in the middle of the plate here, Cole. Two and two, it's pop foul. Wow. Full count to Sheets. And he walked him. I'm going to make the move here. And we're going to bring in Jonathan Hernandez, who's been brilliant so far in the postseason. David Richardson, who doesn't have much speed, is the batter. And everything in Hernandez's arsenal here is meant to be pretty low. We'd love a nice double play ball. Count on Richardson. Two and two. And grounded to Vargas. Out there. Winning game four. The A's even the series. We got mostly what we needed today. Our best offensive showing of the series. A good start from Gilbert. A pretty good job by the bullpen. I had guys on short leashes there. I, I wanted to not use Hernandez, but I didn't want to leave Phillips in there to possibly, you know, pitch in situations he's not proven he's ready for yet. So I'm really happy with this performance overall. We got what we needed. The bullpen should be good for game five. 
when I expect Joe Michael to take the mound again. We had three doubles in the game, a home run. Yes, a lot of guys left on base, but far more big hits in this game. While Tampa struck out nine times, they only had four hits. And we bounced back quite nicely. Yeah, this was the splitter today for Logan Gilbert. And pretty much every time it's going to be targeted lower third or out of the zone. This guy must have missed his splitter looking at this chart like nine times. I know he had 67% strike, but by no means was this pitch as effective as I'd like it to be today. That is what we needed, though, in that matchup. The main thing I want to see now is Joe Michael prepared to start this next game. Would he have full stamina going up against Luis Patino? Not full. So, could we pitch Michael here? Yes. Or we can look to make this more of a bullpen game. Phillips did pitch today. We ensured we're going to go back to Oakland with this win. So Michael could get game six. If we make it a bullpen game, I think we're okay doing that based on how this last game went. But Ashby and Duran, as your best options, might not really be a part of it. This would be a really tricky one to approach i'm sure michael could throw a lot of good pitches still but not at full stamina in a playoff game is just a little bit uncomfortable to start him i'm gonna have to think this one over though that's a really big decision but we've even the series and game five will not be an elimination game but who's gonna take the upper hand and force that game six elimination We'll find out next time, everybody. That was a great game today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel. We're on to Game 5 shortly. I just don't know who's going to be pitching quite yet. And I doubt I'll get to see any feedback before I, uh, before I record the next one. So we'll see what I have in store for you next. Y'all have a great day. And I'll catch you in Game 5.